Hello, um, this, we've had a little bit of a break in terms of putting the videos up, but uh, it's only because it's taken a while to upload. Um, I'm going to start today, this is a, a business video, so a Biz S2 video. Uh, we're going to be looking at the recruitment side of this. Uh, we've done, this is sort of, the, if you're part of uh, my class at college, uh, then this is a booklet that has um, the effect of the workforce in it. So this is about the, the how to recruit uh, people, sort of what ways internally, externally. We're going to go for a few uh, just mentioned. See you there. Um, but we're going to start by saying, well, what is uh, recruiting? Well, recruiting, uh, the recruitment pro process, there's an actual uh, process to this, but generally it's just um, looking for a vacancy and uh, filling it with a position. So, um, just before I go through the recruitment process, uh, there's two things, hopefully one of these pendants can work, um, <laughs> there's two things that uh, employers have to produce uh, when, you, when they are uh, advertising a vacancy. So, uh, we're not going to go through the process just yet, but basically there's two parts to this document. There's, well, there's one document, there's two parts to it. The first part is um, something called the job description. Now, most people just assume this is everything, so this is like skills required, when it's not. And um, that column is something else, so job uh, description, if I can write it. Description. And you may get asked, well, what's the main parts of this? The main parts of the job description, uh, you've got the roles and responsibilities of the job, so what you'll actually be doing, uh, roles and responsibilities. Um, Response. Great. Can't. Roles and responsibilities. So that's uh, the main thing you need to know. Uh, it tells you where the job's located, so the location. And I'm only going to do one more. And just tells you something else, sorry. Just making sure. I'd, yeah, so. So sort of what I said, uh, oh yeah, the, obviously the obvious one, the job title, so what you, the job title, that's why I was overlooking that one, job title. Now there is a few more, they're the main three, so the main three for the first part of this document in the job description, uh, it talks about the roles and responsibilities, and the location of the job, where you're actually going to be, uh, and the job title. Now I mentioned there's two parts, well that's the first part, the second part, I'll do it in a different colour, um, it's called the uh, personal specification. So the personal specification. Now this personal specification, and the pen will last, is um, basically what it is, is the employer and now specifying in detail uh, what kind of person they want for the job. So uh, obviously the first thing that comes to mind is qualifications. So A levels, GCSEs, you know, degrees sort of thing. So qualifications. Um, <clears throat> sort of the nature of the person. So uh, I'm going to put personality. There's not really. Uh, they're the main two, I think. I don't think there's the other two are sort of going off uh, branches from that. I think. I'll just make sure you can uh, see that. So basically, I'm not sure you can actually see the first few. Can you? I don't even think you can. Yeah. So basically, uh, for the job description, it's uh, roles and responsibilities, the location, the job title, and personal specification is the qualifications and sort of personality of the individual. So they're the main main parts of the um, what the. I have to produce in terms of uh, when they're advertising a job. Now, when you advertise a job, you obviously have a vacancy. So what, I mentioned before about the recruitment process. So what, how does that work? Well, uh, I'll just draw a line under this, dotted line, um, and I will sort of draw sort of a, a, a circular flow sort of diagram. Uh, and you can copy it down if you want to. So I'm not going to stop you there. Uh, so the first thing they do is they um, identify the vacancy. Now, this may sound uh, very simple, but it's got to be done. I'm 
we'll go uh, in a minute after we've gone through this. We'll go to how these vacancies can occur. So the first thing we need to identify the vacancy. Uh, so if someone leaves, uh, we go. Oh, well, do you actually need that space anymore? Um, that's why they have to identify it. So it might not be immediately if someone leaving gets the same job with the person who's left because uh, the business might change and they might not really needed that job. Um, you might need something different as the business has evolved and grown, for example. Uh, again, I'll go into a minute. So they identify the vacancy, um, and when they've identified it, what they mean by identify is what they need, what kind of person they're looking for. Uh, they need to advertise it, so um, they can advertise internally or externally, depending on um, whatever the business uh, prefers. So advertise, I just put internal. Slash external, and this because you can obviously do both, or and there's different ways of doing them. So, I've had internally, externally. Now, after you've um, find your vacancy, advertised it, what you need to do is you, um, well, if you've advertised it, it's out there, people are going to apply for it. You need to look through the applications, hopefully, you're going to get a few. So, uh, look through and sort the applications. So basically, this is just them saying, right, these are the, this is shortlisting the people we're going to ask for an interview. Uh, and obviously, in this stage, you have to ask them for the interview as well. So, plus, um, ask shortlisted uh, individuals, shortlisted uh, applicants, actually, for an interview. So, you look through the applicants, you send them, you're right, we're going to interview you, you're quite a good applicant. Uh, and then, obviously, you finalise after you've done. So, this, the last step is um, basically picking uh, the most suited candidate, or picking slash finalising um, the most suited candidate. And this is to a given position. It might be applying for, it could be anything. So that's the main sort of overview uh, of uh, the job description, how to apply, basically how it all works. The main meaty bit. So if you get that, um, then you should be okay for the rest of the uh, video because there's just a few more bits I need to uh, explain. But I think that's a quite an easy thing to understand. I mean, uh, it's logical when you. It's just, you might miss out the identifying bit because it's quite simple, but, uh, you know, we do need to remember that. Um, has it gone through that? So, uh, what I said before about how do these vacancies occur, uh, what I'm going to do now is just step aside to give me a minute to pause it, uh, copy it down, and um, I'll rub it off and go over the next bit. Right, okay. Then I might take some people that want me to pause it, never mind. Uh, yeah. This could be too long on some videos to pause it and like, ah, fuck off, just get on with the video. Okay, so uh, what we've done is we've talked about the uh, recruitment process uh, and the job description, job uh, and personal description, whatever. Uh, what we're going to do now is say, well, how does these vacancies actually occur? Because that's the basis of what you're trying to get across here. Uh, so these vacancies, now, uh, what I mentioned before is when a person leaves an organisation, it's not necessarily uh, the same sort of job that comes back into the organisation. Uh, for example, one of the things, actually I'll write this, uh, write this down, so um, how can vacancies occur? So, how can these vacancies occur? Well, we sort of said um, about expanding, and that is a key one, that, uh, personally I think, so expansion. So basically, uh, if originally you needed um, 
a person to. Oh wait, actually no. Yeah, if before you didn't, you didn't have uh, ten thousand machines uh, in your workspace. So I'm trying to think of a good example there. Uh, ten thousand is quite a good number. Doesn't matter what number. Anyway, so basically, if you've got a load of machinery there and you didn't have that before, then you can't just say, oh right, well a butter tractor it should build a build a house itself or you know plough a field itself. It should be able to do it automatically. We don't know how to hire anyone for that. Wrong. You need to go back to school if you think that. Um, obviously, you listen to this, so you can uh, Expansion. Uh, so that's a key one, basically. Uh, what we mean by that is just creating jobs that weren't there before because they've invested uh, with money that they didn't have before, we assume. Otherwise, we would have invested. So, um, obviously, you're going to need to follow the recruitment process for uh, that. And whether you do that internally or externally, something we're going to come on to. So, expansion. <coughs> Sorry. Now, um, I think uh, a good one, next good one to think of, um, is sort of, it's called natural wastage. Now, what we mean by natural wastage is uh, basically, we don't mean like just rubbish you find on the ground. This. Uh, you know, crisp packets just walk and grow in a side of your hedge. Not that. Um, obviously, it doesn't happen. <coughs> so I have get a bit of an uh, infection. So if I die and you get a virtual infection, please don't sue me. You know, it's be quite a shame. You know? uh, so natural wastage. What we mean by that is when someone just leaves and it's not needed to be replaced. We've gone over that a few times. Uh, I don't think I need to mention uh, that one too much. So natural wastage. Uh, again, if you don't understand, just comment and I will go, go over and uh, help you out if I can. Uh, another one is to do with promotion and transfer. Or promotion or transfer, I'm just going to write promotion. So basically what we mean by this is, obviously if someone gets promoted, um, it's great for them because they get new jobs and responsibilities and a bit more uh, dosh in their back pocket, but, well, back pocket as it's worth. Um, so basically the promotion uh, is is sort of key there because if a person leaves that job doesn't disappear what they did before they're probably going to end up with a different job sort of managing a job if they were a third floor janitor and got to the CEO of Microsoft you know could happen as well uh, so basically that janitor position ha needs to be filled uh, so they're going to need that's going to open a vacancy uh, of someone to do that job so there's three things there, expansion, natural wastage, um, promotion. So uh, we talked about externally and internally recruiting. Uh, so how can you internally and externally uh, recruit? So uh, there are advantages and uh, disadvantages to both of these methods. Uh, you can sort of flick them um, on the head. I'm just going to use a different colored pen. To the other side, that one's a bit rubbish and took them out. That's better. Um, yeah, that's better. Internally. So, you've got externally recruiting and internally recruiting. Now, just to go over sort of a brief overview, if you, I mean, I think hopefully I've made it quite obvious what the two are, but you still don't understand. Um, externally if we give from outside the business, uh, as someone who's never been uh, with the business before, well, might have done, but basically they've never, uh, they've not gone through the ranks as it were of the business, they've just been pulled in it and they're going to be injected into the business at some level, at uh, some speed, I'll just think about that as what you will. Uh, internally recruiting, uh, so it makes sense if that's externally from outside the business, uh, that's going to be from inside the business. And there are certain advantages and disadvantages as I said to both of these. And you can flick them on its head if you weren't listening before. Uh, so, what's an advantage of um, internally? Uh, uh, sorry, actually, we'll go with externally first. I think it's a bit easier to understand. Uh, so, externally. Now, what's an advantage of recruiting externally? Well, if we recruit externally, uh, what we're doing is we're bringing a new talent, new sort of people that have never been there before, uh, so they will have a new perspective on uh, what a 
has happened because if you're brought up uh, with the business, so to speak, and brought through the ranks, um, you may have seen things that, oh, well, look, I can probably think of something new. Whereas they've got a whole new perspective. Oh, actually, it could be wrong, but they've got a whole new perspective. They've never seen these ideas before. Uh, whereas you've sort of grown up with them um, and looked at them as they've built up. Whereas uh, the person coming in could make, oh, well, that's fundamentally rubbish. Uh, fundamentally wrong. Uh, there's a fundamentally wrong with that idea, sorry. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, sort of a main thing. So that's an advantage of recruiting externally. So if you recruit externally, um, there's new ideas from the new people coming in. So new ideas and uh, how have they labelled it? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh damn it, am I? Well, do the advantage and disadvantage first. So, grab it. I messed up in my head there. Yeah, well, the advantage and disadvantage first. And then we'll explain it. That's the better way around. Am I mad? So, um, these perspectives. Yeah, new ideas and perspectives brought into the business. That's because uh, obviously they've never seen it before, so that's an advantage. Um, so, new perspectives. And obviously, if you're bringing in more people, um, you've got a. Uh, there's more people out there than in your business. Obviously, uh, your business seems to be quite big to help your population. Uh, it could happen, but basically, on the whole, uh, most medium sized businesses, what you're looking at business too, um, will have a greater selection outside the business. Uh, so, there's more, you're more likely to find that a specific person who's going to fit that job role uh, much better than someone else, uh, possibly inside your organisation. So, um, a greater selection. Have a, uh, an, uh, a disadvantage of recruiting externally. Uh, it's going to be very costly. Uh, it's not going to be cheap because you're going to need to put adverts out in more places like the job centres where so if you did it internally it's going to be a bit cheaper. Uh, as you only have to put it in company newspapers for example which is not going to be as cheap but it's going to be a hell of a lot cheaper than uh, putting an advert in a recruiting agency for example. Um, so uh, it's very costly to uh, advertise, but just costly as you've got to go through the recruitment process. Uh, another disadvantage of uh, externally, um, the recruitment process, uh, you need to put in, they're going to need induction training, as you know, just look what it was called, um, and you haven't really gone into uh, training, I don't think, I don't show if the video's up yet, uh, basically, on the whole, induction training, just uh, welcoming them to the business, sort of how it works, sort of thing. I won't go into too much detail at the moment, that's for the other videos. Uh, so, induction training, so that's a disadvantage. Now, as I said, you can flip it on its head. Uh, so, an advantage of recruiting it externally would be it's a lot cheaper. You don't need induction training, all you do is flipping the advantages uh, from this side, disadvantages on this side, uh, and vice versa. And then, uh, a disadvantage of this. Uh, internally, is uh, there's no new ideas because the people are just uh, are there already. The ideas probably would have already been said, uh, and obviously there's a small selection as your business we assume to be smaller than the rest of the population. So I go into what I would have gone at the start if I was thinking correctly. Um, how do we uh, sort of how do we recruit externally and internally? Well, we talked about how there's a vacancy. Uh, well, for recruiting externally, uh, what we can... Which way is it? Round, sorry, just... I go through it in the head in a certain order, so I'll just... Yeah, I'll do three internal entries. Uh, it seems a bit easier to remember, and there's only... Well, externally it's easier to remember, I'll go through the part of it first, sorry. So, the internally is promotion and transfer. Uh, I just put promotion. So basically, uh, this sort of links in with another one, um, personal recommendation. So, uh, promotion basically um, is when the manager says, oh, you're doing a, a good job, 
you can probably handle uh, the extra uh, responsibilities of a higher job. That's why it links into personal recommendation uh, because it's from a manager in that department saying uh, this person uh, is able to perform the higher role better maybe with the person that's doing it now. Uh, obviously you want to reduce uh, the quality of your managers. Um, and a way, another way of recruiting uh, internally is from the uh, internal advertising. Uh, so just put internal. So internal advertising. Basically, uh, what this is is uh, we sort of said it before about putting the adverts in the company newspapers, uh, that sort of thing. Externally, uh, well, an obvious one would be like the job centres. Uh, and another one could be the uh, recruitment agency. Recruitment agencies are actually quite a good idea because um, it means, we say, they're specialised in the field of finding people with the correct jobs. And, they help you to link people and uh, allow business to continue with its work, uh, investing in new products and, and research and development sort of thing. However, they just sort of cut into businesses' profits uh, as they're offering a service of finding uh, the unemployed for you instead of you going to have to go down and look for them. Um, so obviously, that's going to be quite uh, a bit of a pain because sorry, they're going to have to sort of involve their own. Uh, profit margins into the service because they're not going to be doing what you to do it for free or even at a factor cost which is an economics term but never mind so that's recruiting internally, externally, advantages, disadvantages uh, how they can occur so I'll just uh, give you a minute to uh, copy that down and throw it off um, what we're going to do, what we're going to do now uh, is we're going to sort of uh, go on, go through a few uh, examples of um, of selection, recruitment, sort of thing. So hopefully, you can copy that down. I mean, I'm going to go through quite a few here. Uh, I'm going to look through the book for most of them. Uh, I don't tend to remember all of these off the top of my head. Uh, you know, you only need to know one or two. They're not going to ask you for like all eight or nine. I'll be wrong. The first one, quite an obvious one really, the first thing you'd think about, um, the interview. Uh, and I don't think I need to explain that really, uh, so we'll just put that down interview. Basically they ask you, you know, standard thing, you're asking you questions, uh, sort of getting to know the person, but that is really uh, time consuming for them as well, and costly to set it up. Uh, another one is, how would it, how is it worded? Uh, Assessment tests. Assessment tests or something. So I just put assessment tests. So basically, what this is, um, I remember one of the questions I saw in this book uh, was asking me how uh, is an assessment test relevant uh, or useful for picking a managerial position? It may seem very uh, worthy, but basically, all he was asking me was. Uh, why do employers pick assessment tests as a way of testing managing? Well, assessment tests are very uh, useful because uh, they basically, it, assessment, it's giving like a work sort of simulation sort of thing. It's like playing a video game except uh, sort of practicing your job. So it gives the employees an idea of how they would be put under the pressure, under the strain of uh, real, well, not real, but uh, sort of practice real uh, tests sort of thing. So. Uh, put them in the work, compare the work with different managers, and instead of just because they can go in into an interview and say, Yeah, I'm the best manager in the world, but if they went into an assessment center, they could actually realize if they tell the truth or not. It's like Jeremy Kyle, except it's a bit less funny. Um, you know, so assessment center, I mainly remember them two off the top of my head, but I'll just call them so uh, that sort of linked into something else which is called uh, a work sample. Uh, they're basically the same thing, really. So if you can remember one, you can remember the other, for example. Now, the difference between assessment test and a work example is a work example could be uh, a written test where it's an assessment. Well, actually, they're the same thing, really. 
Yeah. Well, says the test is more sort of practical uh, work sample is more sort of written. It can be both, it can be either, but just generally assessment tests more sort of, uh, if you say putting a manager in a position, you've been testing that sort of thing, you're testing more practical sort of stuff. Uh, whereas a work sample is said, it's more sort of an essay sort of thing. Um, the psychometric tests, so I'm only really going to go through three actually, because I'm a boy's death, psychometric, now it may say the again, uh, quite a fancy word, but all it means really is, uh, so it's sort of a, a question, it goes along with a personal specification uh, that you might have to send in. Uh, basically it's just understanding how the employee is like, uh, sort of just, uh, what's it called, um, I have multiple choice, I can't remember it, never mind. Uh, so it's like a multiple choice sort of exam sort of thing, uh, it probably gives you, a, well, it doesn't, it does give you sort of a selection of answers uh, and you pick them and obviously it, it, they put it in some kind of software and uh, it bursts up kind of what personality you have. Essentially that's all it's looking for to kind of personality psychometric test. You need to know how it works. I've just given you a bit of an overview of how they do work. You don't need to know that, you just need to know it's just a way of finding out someone's personality essentially. So that's the um, the main ones there. <coughs> just give me a minute to put that down. Rub it off. So that is um, mainly it. I'm just going to go through a few more things now before uh, we finish off. Just one or two things I've missed out. Uh, I'm not going to write these down because they're quite simple, so I don't like that one actually. Um, so basically, this last little bit in here is uh, saying how recruitment and selection could improve the workforce. Uh, so basically, it's to do with the quality and the quantity of labour, so uh, what kind of skills are needed in the future uh, would help you sort of work out what kind of person you need uh, which all relates to, I uh, look at this board, yeah, look, we to this point I've written here about halfway down the board uh, and it was about, um, <laughs> joking, basically it was expansion I was going to say so you know if you're expanding you're going to think well what sort of person are we going to get in um, we're not going to get Joe, uh, we're going to get Jonathan because he's an IT expert, uh, we're going to need IT systems in the future, for example. Um, labor to, what's a labour turnover rate for the business? Um, obviously you can reduce the, basically that's, that's one thing that I was going to go on to, you know, missed out something. So basically the labour turnover is, uh, we have sort of covered it in one of the other videos, I'm not sure if it's up yet. Uh, yeah, it's, it's called uh, the effectiveness of the workforce video. Uh, yeah, so basically that one over labour turnover. And one of the main problems with labour turnover is um, if people are leaving too often, uh, they're not you're not recruiting the selection process is not efficient because you're not picking the right people. If they're leaving, you're obviously not picking the right people. I uh, assume that people leave uh, the people that you've hired. Well, see, so they could have an effect. The theory manager makes someone else leave, but essentially, if the labour turnover rate is high, uh, your selection and recruitment process is pants. Um, so obviously, that will uh, increase that. But you do want to have a, a relatively small late turnover because it means there's new ideas um, coming into your business. And the trend in current wage increases and training programs. That's really it. There's not much more to that. I've gone over. The main, main chunk of it was to do with the internal, external, and the ways of recruiting people. Uh, so if you missed that, go back over it, as I said. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.